Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ash. I'm Pav. And we're going to show you today how to do some cabling. Following the Unify video that I done a few weeks ago, a lot of good feedback on the cabling side of it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at how to crimp a Cat5, talk about the two different standards, and we're going to see how I do it, how Pav does it. We're going to run it through our tester so you can see how we test it in a live data center environment. Stay tuned guys. So guys, I'm going to show you how I do a Cat5 with some of our kit here. Perhaps I'm going to do the same but with the other end, and then we'll run it for a tester. So, I've got a load of kit here. I've got a bit of Cat5, I've got a crimper, and I've got the box that you saw in the Unify video that's got various coloured boots, it's got some random tools here and there, and Cat5 ends and a little bin should I need it. Um, in the data center, we obviously use this to get all the offcuts because we don't want little bits of copper going into our super expensive equipment. So, if I unwrap this, there you go. So the internet literally runs off eight copper wires and a little bit of plastic, like that. That's uh, the internet, if anyone ever asks you. So, somewhere in here, I've got a very traditional wire stripper. Now, because of health and safety and all that, I tend to use that most of the time. This looks a little bit too cut, as in someone's actually cut into the cores. And someone's put some So now I've got some cutters that I think actually cut. I'm going to recut this. So effectively, this was cut too far, so the cores were actually cut into, which means they could short against one another, cause all sorts of problems. So we've got a a bit of cable here that I know is good, so there's no dinks in it, etc. And in the data center, we tend to put boots on it because it helps with the bend on the end of the plug there. And it also gives you a little clip here that helps you get the, the cable out of the, out of the port. So, in the data center, we tend to use 568B. Um, 568A is another standard which is rarely used, to be honest, but it is used in some places. Um, so the first step, is to put your boot on because if you don't, once you've stripped the cable, you've then got to fiddle around with eight cores to try and get the boot on, which isn't easy. You've got your stripper here that you just put on and you just give it a twist. This one's a little blunt. Normally you'd use your finger like that, but I've the reason I held it like that, I was just putting a bit more pressure on the blade because it is a little more blunt. You just give it a twist and it starts to separate. And then you could just pull it off and put it in your off cut bin. So in here you've got four different colours, so you've got orange, white, blue and green, and then within that you've got an orange and white core, a green and white core, a blue and white core, and a brown and white core. So when we start we just kind of pull them out, straighten them up, just because it makes it easier to put it in the plug when we get round to it. So once we've straightened all these out, we can then put them in order. Okay, so the ordering is the probably the hardest bit. The rest of it is easy. The hardest bit is remembering what order the, the cores go in. So 568B will do today, obviously. Um, but what I want to explain is, first of all, the twists. So Cat5 and Cat6 have a different amount of twists. The reason they have twists are purely to re reduce electromagnetic interference because Cat5 is copper and it's electrical signals. Um, Cat6 does have more twists, Cat5 has slightly less, but Cat6 can do 10 gig. Um, so, if we go orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, white, blue, green, brown, white, brown. So they're in order, but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna kind of wiggle them around, get them nice and straight, so effectively they're all straight and together and in the right order. Give it a check, orange, white, orange, green, blue, white, blue, green, brown, white, brown. So now they're, they're straight, they're in the right order and they're pretty much the same width as my plug. So I'm gonna take my uh, crimp tool here that's got a little blade on one side and a flat edge. I'm just gonna cut that off into my off cuts. 
So now I've got a straight edge on it and I'm just gonna pinch it a little further back and put it in the boot with the clip facing down. So once I slide it in, I need to push it along the bottom to keep them in line and then push them forward to get them in these pins because there's little guides. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's little plastic guides that guide each core onto its relevant pin. So now I've slid it in, I'm just making sure my cores are still in the right order. So I've got orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, white, blue, green, brown, white, brown. Just check it. Okay, so now that's in, but we're not done yet. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take the boot, I'm gonna slide it into the plug. And I'm gonna lift that over the plastic clip. So now on the side of the boot here, there's a little notch which is where this little plastic bit, which I'm about to punch through, goes in and it locks it into place. At the same time, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna push these pins, pierce the, the, um, pierce the sheath on the core and make contact. So the pin is making contact with the core, then the pin makes contact in the port of a switch or whatever. So now I've got it here. I'm gonna put it in my, uh, just make sure what way around it goes that way. So I'm gonna push that in going to push a cable to the end so all the cores come to the end of the plug. Just going to punch it down. And I'm just going to check it once more. Make sure all cores go to the end. Make sure it's all in the right order. And the boot is sealed and that there's no exposed cores here. But you can see on this, the actual cable sheath ends here and then the cores start there, which is quite good. Um, so yeah, I will now let Pav do the other end because he has some funky way of doing it. So, Pav, fire okay. away. The way I'm doing it, it's not too different from the way you do it. The only thing is uh, I'm not using this because when you cut it, you have a risk to cut through the ins insulation of the actual cores and even cut through the copper. So when you do that, you can damage the core it won't be uh, like visible from day one but when you wiggle it further you can the core can break and that will present you with the different problems on the actual crimping tool there are two blades one blade is cutting another one is stripping so you can actually do it like that in theory but it doesn't work so it's not long enough to then find the pairs and twist them, but you probably won't see, but insulation of some of them is now damaged. So when I found that out, I came across a different way of doing that. So I'm using this blade to just cut it plain. So it's now equal. So I do it that way. I pull it a bit, then I bend it. So the cores are now inside. I cut them. And now I move it, the isolation back. So by doing this, I make sure that no isolation is damaged. And then everything goes as you do. You just untwist the pairs. Now I didn't put the boot on. Is it? It's now kind of too late, but we can still do that. <clears throat> As Ash mentioned, if you forget to do it in the first place, it's now harder to do that, but still doable. So we can now put the pairs back into their places. And we start assembling. Okay, once you make it flat, you cut the ends so they are the same length. Take the crimp. Double check. What I tend to check is from this end, you can actually see all the cores, they like shining golden cores. 
they copper but they look like gold from this side and then you crimp it we'll now test the cable that we just made yeah. i'll plug the end into the switch i don't know why i'm holding this like this but there you go and I'm going to plug this into this little box. Now this little box is quite a cool device. It's called Pocket Ethernet. What it is, is it's a tester. So once I turn it on, it's got some funky lights on it. And it connects to an app on your phone. And there's a little button that says connect. You press connect and it connects. So that works. So we've got the tester, we've got the switch. The reason I've got this switch is because we need to create a whole one gig um, circuit. So that's a gigabit switch at that end. This does gigabit. So now that I've got this on, I can select what I want to test. Because we're just testing the cable, I can do a wire map, which will tell me how it's wired, but I want to do link, so I'm going to turn that on. And then as soon as I hit measure, what it's going to do is, is this is going to kick into action, that's going to kick into action, and then it's going to test the line to make sure it's one, it's wired correctly, and two, that it comes up at a gig, which we want it to for our customers in the DC because that's what we give them. So if I hit measure, it's running its test. The green light on the other end has come up as a gig. So first of all, I know that's gigabit. And then this end has now told the app on my phone that it's come up one meg, um, one meg, one gig, full duplex. And if I click into it, I can see all the information about it. So I can see any delay, making sure there's no polarity issues, stuff shorting and whatnot. And I can see that I've got half and full duplex at 10 meg, 100 meg, and a gig. So that cable would pass our QC process, providing it's the correct length in the customer rack and stuff. Um, when we're cabling in the DC, the only thing left to do now would be to, to put a label on it, which gives us a cable ID, where it goes to and from. But that's more for our benefit than yours. Um, so yeah, that's an intro to cabling with Custodian. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I can really cover on this. Um, cables come in different colours. Um, you don't have to have a boot, it's not a requirement. And these tools you can buy online. We'll um, put a little link to one in the description for you. Um, yeah, so that is how you do a Cat5 custodian's way. I mean, it's the way we've been doing it for 10 years now and it's not let us down, so yeah. Onwards and upwards, as they say. But just remember, next time someone might ask you, do you know how the internet works? Bit of plastic and a bit of copper. So that is a Cat5. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope that kind of gave you an insight as to what a little bit of the internet and networks and computers run off. Um, as you can tell, my way and Pav's way of actually taking the insulation off is completely different. Um, but each, each to their own. I prefer my way, Pav per prefers, prefers his way. Um, so yeah, th thank you for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Um, we are nearly, very nearly at 10,000 subscribers and we've got a little something in the works for you guys. So stay tuned for that. I've been Ash. I've been joined by Pav. We'll see you in the next video guys. Bye.